Hey, what's up and welcome i'm the one and only west coast king and welcome back to the minnesota united career where we're still in the offseason transfer window we got about a week left to make some more decisions if we want to bring in some more players or not we still have i think four roster spots available to bring in potential player or potentially bring in players for this season remember i'm trying to stay under the 30 player min or 30 player cap for our roster so we have some room to maneuver here and one of the suggestions from you guys in the comments of last episode was Keegan Rosenberry. And we, I think we talked about Rosenberry in season one. I said I didn't want to go after him because he's already in the MLS, a starter, in a pretty decent situation there in Philadelphia. I'm pretty sure they made the playoffs last season in this career mode. So they're a decent team. There'd be no reason for him to move. However, he is now in the last year of his contract. We all know how that goes with MLS teams. He'll probably end up leaving for free in the summer anyway. So I will negotiate with philadelphia his release clause is 1.6 million i don't want to pay that much for him i i don't think that's a smart financial move for us I, i'm okay with velasco honestly going forward i know rosenberry has a lot more potential he's a really really good right back but i'm not sure if we need to go out and spend that money on rosenberry right now the next player on the list is another suggestion and it is kevin balanta i don't know anything about this guy his release clause is 2.4 million so i am definitely not paying that I know I don't think a lot of you guys are very um, very interested in Remedi staying at the team. Remedi's also unhappy, so I might move away from Remedi. You know, I might sell him on and go for a different player in that center mid position that can play potentially next to Ian Harks for, you know, for the rest of this career or whatever. So Kevin Belanta could be one of those players, but that's a high price tag to pay for a midfielder at this point. Slightly more realistic, and this is a player that I came up with, is Derek Jones. I really, really like the look of this guy at Philadelphia. Again, another Philly player. He can play center defensive mid and center mid. $1.5 million release clause. His value is $1 million. I think he's also in the last year of his contract as well. So this guy may be a player that we could get. He's only 66 rated, but I'm, st I'm good staying with Sam Cronin for now. If we get this guy, we could develop him over the course of the season, and he could gradually take over for Cronin. I really, really like this guy. I think this one makes a little bit more sense. I don't think his potential is probably as high as Belanta's, but he is an MLS dude. He is another American, and I would really like bringing him in. The last player on this list is a bit of an unknown one. I found him in the free agency, a left back. I know we're good at left back with Jovan Jones, but I always want to bring in players for good value in the MLS. Ernest Chamin, maybe? I'm not really sure how to say his name. He's French. He is a left back. And I think he's actually pretty decent. His value is $1.3 million. I'm almost done scouting him. However, Atletico Bilbao are in for him as well. So that tells me he's probably a pretty good player. I'll offer him a contract. Well, I'll see what he wants as a contract. If he puts him in the designated players in the designated player bracket, we obviously can't get him. But if I can get him for good value, I'll definitely look at bringing him in. Something else you guys wanted me to have a look at was the kit numbers, and I would agree with this as well. Specifically, this first one here, Aaron Johansson. You guys wanted me to give him the number 9. Currently, Brandon Vasquez has the number 9, but he's also a new addition to the team. He's a youngster, 19 years old. Down on the depth chart, I mean, Johansson deserves, I think, the number 9 as our starting striker. So let's go ahead and give him that number 9 shirt. And Vasquez, ooh, Vasquez will move to number 3. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like Vasquez as a number three as a striker. We'll put him up. We'll give him his, we'll give him uh, Johansson's old number of 14. So that'll work. The other player you wanted me to have a look at changing the number on is Jovan Jones. He's currently number two in the team. And one of you guys said to change it to number three. The only thing is in Seattle, he wears the number 33. So I don't know if you meant three or 33. Right now, we'll change it to three. I think Shuttleworth has the number 33. I don't mind taking his number away from him because, again, he's not a starter on the team anymore either. But for now, I'll go with what you said and change it to number three, and uh, we'll, we'll stick with that. No one's currently number three anyway, so it doesn't make a big difference. So Joven Jones will now be number three. So I've gone ahead now and negotiated a transfer fee for Keegan Rosenberry. I've included Velasco in the deal. They were willing to swap right backs plus a little bit of cash. So it's actually a pretty decent deal for us. Now we just have to get down to the business of the contract with Rosenberry. He only wanted a rotation for squad role. So it tells me that he's not, probably not as high rated as I was hoping he's going to be. And I don't know what his wages are currently either. If he wants a rotation player squad role, I think his wages are going to be low. Let's offer him 5k and a $50,000 bonus maybe. And I don't even think he's going to want 
I don't even think he's gonna want a bonus on that on top of that like uh, uh, for appearances or anything so let's just go with that and see what they say 5k a week and $50,000 bonus then that's it okay Keegan Rosenberry is our new right back I'm a little worried about what his rating is so let's go check that out and Rosenberry actually is not bad he's 68 rated I'm not sure why he was so down on himself as far as how good he thought he was and what role he deserved but 68 rated is really really decent He's got decent sprint speed. He's, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but 78 stamina is good, so we don't have to take too much time off. He's a solid defender. He can work on things a little bit. I mean, he's 68 rated, so he's not the greatest player in the world, but he's definitely an upgrade over Velasco. I like that a lot. Five foot eight, three star weak foot, two star skills. I mean, he's a defender first, which I really, really like, especially since we have Joven Jones on the other side, who's not exactly defensive minded. All right, so small problem here. Three hours left in the transfer window, and Hanover has decided to pay the release clause of our starting center back, Francisco Calvo, $4.1 million. That is not good. I mean, I can afford to go out and buy another center back, but with three hours left, we could be in a lot of trouble. Granted, we do have Ryan McGowan as cover, so I am not freaking out totally about this, but that's not a good thing. I wanted to keep Calvo in the team. Apparently... I can offer him a new contract and entice him to stay. Something I could have done with Don Lottie as well. I didn't know that, so that's that's my mistake. Again, new to the whole transfer situation in FIFA 18. So I apologize. I could have kept Don Lottie. I would have done if I knew I could have. But I'm going to try to offer Calvo a new contract. All right. So with Calvo, he's making 5.7K per week in wages. I've already got the squad rule crucial. Four-year length. That's fine. All that's good. No release clause this time. Damn the release clause. If I have to pay more in salary to get rid of a release clause from now on, I will. I don't want this happening anymore. And hand over a rats for trying to steal him with three hours left. That's a that's a disgusting move. But 5.7 is his current wage. Let's try to keep him 8k? Uh let's go 8.5 and, and see what he says about that one. And a signing bonus of I'll go a hundred thousand and and see what he says about that one. So Let's submit that offer. I don't think that's going to get it done. Though I say that about every one of them. But let, let's see what he says about that. Okay, so he wants he only wants 6.9k in wages. That's not bad. $105,000 signing bonus. $200,000 after 25 appearances. Uh, that's a lot of money. I hate doing all these, all these renegotiations. But let's edit the bonus. That's a lot of money for... For, for a player in the MLS for a bonus. So let's go 150K. Let's try to drop that down a little bit. And we're also going to boost up the... Oh shit, not that much. Let's go 7.9K. Well, we'll see if he'll take that one instead. That's a little bit better. That actually might be more, but he loves the club. Okay, so we'll do that one. $7.9,000 in wages for Calvo and he's staying with us. All right, so this one is interesting. With two hours left now in the transfer window... Montreal have offered a million dollars for Jome, and given that we have that dude in the free agency that we could get for a good deal, um, probably around the same wages that Jome is getting paid, I'm thinking now that this might actually be a good a good idea. Jome is the same rating as that guy, but the other guy is five years younger. I think that dude has excellent potential, so you know what? This time, I'm going to accept this offer. With two hours left, though, I don't know if there's going to be enough time for Montreal to work out a contract. We'll have to wait and see, but a million dollars for Jome is not bad. So here is the situation. Jome has been sold to Montreal, but since it's outside of the transfer window now, he will stay with us until the summer, at which point when the summer transfer window opens, he will move to Montreal, which means we're going to need a new left back at that point. And I don't want to wait for this guy to sign with someone else. It's the left back from the free agency, Ernest Chemin. Chem, Chemin... Ch I don't know why I keep picking left backs with such hard names to say. Jome, Chamin, I don't freaking know. But I'm going to sign this dude. $4,100 in wages is not bad. That's pretty average for the MLS. Only wants a $52,000 signing bonus. He does have a release clause, but I'm not too worried about it. If at some point that becomes a problem, we'll revisit that. But this is going to be our new left back once Jome leaves and probably take over the backup role right away because, I mean, this dude does have probably really good potential. So let's go ahead and sign Ernest Shemin, 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 I don't know how to say this guy's name. He's going to be in the team now, though. All right, enough transfer business. It's time to get down to business on the field. First game of the season, we're away to Orlando City. 
to take on Joe Bendick and that Orlando City team. And this is the this is the team we have on the field right now. This is a very, very strong lineup. Are a lot of new faces in there. Johansson up top, Jozinho on the right, Jones in the left back spot, Rosenberry in the right back spot. Also, I've been training up Courtney Ford all offseason. He's up to 70 overall rated as well. So given that team and the ratings of these players, I think expectations have to be very, very high going into this season. Honestly, Every away game, I expect at least a point. Every home game, I think we should win. A bar none, we should probably be the favorites in every game this season. Except for maybe we're against Seattle. We'll have to see how that goes. But for now, we're on the road in Orlando for the first game of the year. Let's go. All right, here we go. Kickoff in season number two in sunny Orlando. And this might be the first time I've played an Orlando City team. Where they actually put their best lineup in there against me. It's a very, very strong lineup with Dwyer and Laren up top. Ba uh, not Barry. What's his name? Giles Barnes in there behind him. Which, if you know me, that, that scares the crap out of me. I hate Giles Barnes. Uh, but also, Joe Bendick is in there today. So, uh, plenty of opportunities to score some goals. Oh, Nicholson just does get by. Here comes Nicholson into the 18. Pull it back. No, no. It's going to fall for Molino, who has the shot. Hits it over the bar. That should have been first goal right there. Molino in the 18-yard box. Got to put that on target. Oh, that should have been a first goal. All right, we have a corner here. Let's actually go ahead and put this in there. I have Johansson back post. Jalzinho cleared it. What the f- What was that? My high speed player just cleared the ball off of the opponent's goal line. What? All right, we have a corner here. We're shortly before halftime. Nicholson spins inside. Trying to play it here for Calvo. One more. We have Ian Harks off the crossbar. Very, very well worked. And that's going to be a way by Orlando. Actually, that's going to be a foul on Orlando, I think. But either way, dang it, that was close. In there for Molino. Molino out wide for Jauzinho. Turns it in. Jauzinho looking for the run of Kevin Molino. Joe Bendig, no. All right. 65 minutes gone. Now is the time where we need those impact subs. Ethan Finley's going to come on. I half want to bring on Ramirez for Johansson, but I'm going to leave Johansson on there. He looks okay for stamina, so we'll leave him in there for a little while longer. And I think that's all we're going to do for now. So, Ethan Finley, this is your new role on the team. Can he come through? God, we just... We've tackled the ball like 50... There you go, Hart. Nope. 51 times now. How many times do we have to make a tackle here before we actually get control of the... Eight. That was, that was, what was the point of even playing right there? Dom Dwyer scores the goal and then dances like he has some stick up his ass. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing, but anyway, yeah, that was, that was some bullshit. We tackled the ball so many times there and it just kept going right back to him. They're like, what else are we supposed to do? Look at that ball. That came off of two of my defenders off of a tackle and still went to Dom Dwyer and he just turns and scores. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. That was just unlucky. Nice. Are the ref blows the whistle? There? Oh, come on, ref. Well, we start the season with a loss. 1-0, fully undeserved loss to Orlando. Let's, let's have a look at the stats, shall we? Shall we, shall, shall we take a look at the tale of the AIDS? We had seven shots, only two on target. I guess, yeah, okay. Fair enough. We weren't, we weren't, we weren't clinical enough. We weren't efficient enough with our chances. They had four shots on target. The goal they scored was absolute bullshit, but I mean... I'm not happy. I'm really not happy with that. We, we should be better than that. So we're moving right into the next match. Our first home match of the season now. I made one change to the lineup. Remedi is in the midfield in place of Cronin. Nothing that Cronin did. He actually played very, very well. I just want to give Remedi a chance in there as well. So other than that, exact same team, exact same formation. We're going to go out and win this game. We, we, we should win, like I said, every home game this season. I don't care who the opponent is. This team is elite in the MLS. We should be better than what we were in that first match. So let's get more shots on target, more chances created. Let's win this damn game. All right, here we go. Kickoff, our first home match of the season against Dallas. They have, I don't think they actually have any new players. I mean, nobody buys anyone in the MLS so I don't think they have any new players in their team how is that not a foul on your hand I don't know so it's pretty much the same Dallas team that you're used to seeing so we'll see how they do in this one Ooh, Nicholson another good play uh, high up the field he's played very very well in defense so far let's go for um okay for Ch for Jauzinho Jau what the hell what was that 
Oh, no, I gave up. The oh, God. It's all going wrong, boys. It's all going wrong. That was my fault. Stupid slide tackle in the box. At least, I, it was only a yellow, right? It didn't, Harks didn't get sent off, right? Okay, it's just a yellow card. Fuck me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just not playing well. Which is so bizarre, because I've spent the last four hours playing squad battles on Ultimate Team. I should be good. Usually when I do that, I'm, I'm unbelievable in career mode. But right now, I just can't. Goes under the goalkeeper and into the back of the... You've got to be kidding me. You've got, you've got to be... Thank you, Kevin. That was almost the end of my controller and monitor at the same time. You've got to be kidding me if that goes in the back of the net. That is halftime. We need to have a talk, boys. I, I, I keep saying that we're unlucky, and I keep using that excuse. And to the extent the goals we've given up sometimes have been unlucky. But at some point, this team has got to pull it together and win a fucking game in the MLS. We haven't won one in, I think, seven or eight games now. This is getting ridiculous. Pull your heads out of your asses, put it together, and win this game against Dallas. It's winnable. They've been shit. We should win this game. All right. Come on, boys. Was that the talk that we needed? We needed this, a little bit of tough love for this squad. Oh, Jalzino's coming straight up the Wow. Jalzino is literally just coming straight up the middle. Okay. That, that works. There's some liveliness from our, our top player. Maybe he's going to set the pace here. Maybe that's what we needed. Let's go. That was very, very easy. I don't know what Dallas is doing. Like I said, they've been awful. And that proves it right there. Let's go. 1-1 one, one to start the second half. Immediate results. Let's win. Let's win a game. A little ball roll away from Barrios. I like it. Johansson. Oh, what a ball. What a find in there. Oh, Nicholson. What a touch. Oh, what a save from Chris Dykes. Oh, my God. That was such a good play. That was such a good move from Nicholson. Molino's on the ball. Here we go, boys. Play that out wide for Nicholson. He's on it. Let's go, Nicholson. Yes, that burst of pace is what we were looking for. Nicholson into the box. Nicholson looking. He's got Joe. Oh, my God. He had Johansson. He pokes it wide. Come on, guys. I'm begging. We still have 25 minutes left. We are all over Dallas right now. Find this goal, boys. Win this game. Oh, nice one, too. Jauzinho's looking up the pitch for Johansson, who gets by somehow. Looking for Molino. Molino, backside. Nicholson puts it home. Beautifully worked counterattack. That's the response we were looking for. That's the Minnesota that I expected heading into this season. Thank you, boys. That is all I wanted you to do. Show me that you've got the ability to go out there and win some games. Nicely done. Wait. Oh, why does the ref always blow the whistle in that situation? You saw Jozinho going around, right? That's 100% going to be our third goal. If he can finish, it's been very suspect today with our team. But either way, that is the final whistle. And we do come away with three points in our first home match. Very, very shaky start, I would to say the least. But they really turned it on after halftime. Led mostly Sam Nicholson, probably man of the match. Again, the playmaker on this team actually scored a goal for himself in this one as well. Was all over the place once again. I don't care who the highest rated player on the team is. Sam Nicholson puts in big shifts every single game. I absolutely love Nicholson out wide on the left. I'm just glad we got those three points. That's a relief. So after that rocky start to the season, we sit in eighth place, but we've only played two games. It's definitely not time to panic yet. At least we're on the board with our first points. As our first win, I would have to go back and look it up. Honestly, I don't remember who we beat for our last win in the MLS. It was quite a while ago, though. It was last season at some point. I don't even know who it was. Honestly, I don't even remember. That's how long ago our last win was with this team. So that is a relief. We're in eighth place, but it's okay. It's early in the season. Once we get used to this team, things will start to come together. Things will start to mesh. And I think we'll pick it up a little bit. So the only thing I'll have to ask you guys about, I guess, is Eric Rometty. Should he stay in this team? Or should we look to replace him with someone that's a little bit better? Or someone that you guys want to see more than Eric Remetti? It's up to you guys. I don't have a preference either way. Remetti's all right. But if you want to see someone else, we could definitely have a look. So that's it for this one. If you did enjoy it and you believe that we can make this thing work, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you when we come back for some more Minnesota United career. See ya.